Today I'm showing you guys one of the most overpowered things in Hearts of Iron 4 and if used correctly and in multiplayer it is completely unfair and so easy to do for any Axis nation or any fascist or anything along those lines, even communist nations like Russia, it is so easy to do it is almost an exploit. Now just by the title of this video I'm sure you guys understand already I'm talking about converting factories and you're probably thinking that that's not really overpowered and it's kind of a stupid thing but how overpowered is it when you do it in a certain way like I'm about to show you guys? I just made a USA player rage quit in a multiplayer server because as Japan I was outproducing him navally and militarily in 1938 and I hadn't even invaded China yet I was just concentrating on doing this like civ thing in a certain way and then later in 39 when I invaded China I was already Already pushing through to Beijing without even navally invading I was just marching along the coast and so on so let me start off with saying one of the most important things about this video and this only works for a few nations more specifically communist nations but pretty much this is set up perfect for the fascist nations like Italy Japan and Germany and a couple others that don't have very high mill counts at the start well Germany does but you'll understand in a minute how it works for them but it mostly works for countries that have small like military factory or high military factory counts and very few civs like Japan and Italy. Now before I show you guys this because I know people are going to say somewhere in the comments like in my other videos that it's dumb, it's pointless, that's a bad idea, it doesn't work and to stop all those really comments and all those people saying that stuff I'm going to go into the math behind this and show you guys why it is so overpowered and why it works the way it does. Now factory construction by itself costs 10,800 for a civilian factory, 7,200 for a military factory, and 6,400 for a dockyard. For converting factories, it's civilian to military 4,000 and military to civilian 9,000. So you're really only saving about 1,800 when you're going from just straight up building a civilian factory to going from military to civilian factory. So the numbers say pretty much that it doesn't really sound like it's that powerful and there's no real reason to swap mills over to sieves and lose the precious bullets and guns you need to make as the access to lob at the allies, right? Just like the meme goes, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. There are two different economy laws that drastically change the cost of converting mills to sieves and building mills. They are war economy and total mobilization. War economy reduces the cost by 20% and also give the bonus of 20% when building mills and the same thing for total mobilization but it's 30% for everything. But how big of a difference does this really make? In a maxed out level 10 infrastructure zone this changes the normal building cost from 31 days to 24 days when converting a military factory to a civilian factory and in a level 5 infrastructure zone goes from 64 days to 51. By the way, I did all these tests on partial mobilization, so there's no bonuses or penalties. When using total mobilization in the same instances, you get on a level 10 infrastructure zone, you go from 31 days to 21 days, which only makes a three day difference, and a level five infrastructure goes from 64 days to 45 days, which only makes really a six day difference. So that just leaves two parts to this. One, how is someone supposed to get war economy and total mobilization so early, and what's the point of swapping all these factories into civs compared to just building the civilian factories instead? All the Axis powers can get war economy incredibly easy. It only requires more than 50% war support, and Italy alone starts at 50%, so all they need to do is wait for Germany to do a focus or start justifying on anyone at the start raising support by any amount whatsoever. If you're playing as Italy and you want to do this in multiplayer, the easiest thing I've seen to do so you don't break any rules is to really quick justify on the Middle East, which increases only 2%, I believe, and it doesn't really do anything to world tension but the 2%, and it gives you like 3 or 4% war support. So that alone should give you enough to get war economy, and then really quick just cancel it, and there's no world tension at all, and nobody really noticed a spike. Germany starts with 30% and Joseph Goebbels under the political advisors also will give another 10% to war support and then the Rhineland focus will give you 12% which puts Germany at enough war support for war economy in just one focus. As Japan you already start with 100% and in three focuses you are put on war economy and then two more focuses after that will give you total mobilization just through the focus tree alone and you don't even have to use any of your political power. This literally means that all the Axis have very easy shortcuts to get to war economy and total mobilization, and if done correctly, the Axis can be outproducing the Allies as long as you're converting the mills to the civs, and since war economy and total mobilization give you 20 or 30% bonuses to building the mills, you can literally get them back in just a couple months once you start building back your military factories after you have enough civs. 
Now for the second part of this question, why would you do this instead of just building sieves and keep your mills and keep building up in the start? A civilian factory costs 10,800 production cost. Converting a military factory to a civilian factory costs around 9,000. On war economy, it costs 7,200 technically, and then on total mobilization, it only costs 6,300. This means for every two civilian factories you could be building, you could get three to five civilian factories by converting the mills to sieves. This lets you get more than enough civilian factories early on that you can just build back the military factories with the 20 to 30% bonuses, and that will literally give you a huge boost in civilian factories and especially in multiplayer where the Axis actually need to coordinate and get as many synthetics and supplies as possible, this will let you build a huge synthetic refinery and then you can begin building your military factories and become totally self-reliant. Now for the final part of the video, which nation should do this and which nation shouldn't and for how long? Germany has a lot of their focuses locked behind troop requirements in the army, but for Germany, civs are one of the most important things you can get so you can rebuild your nation if you start getting bombed by the allies and all this other kind of crazy stuff, especially if you're playing multiplayer. I would recommend if you're going to do this as Germany like I have, do it for exactly one year after you get war economy and then build back one civilian factory or one synthetic factory for every two lines of military factories you're building. Every single time I've done this and just build it for one year exactly after I've gotten war economy, I've always ended up with around 60 civilian factories for my use. For Italy, this works great since they only have Ethiopia to worry about at the beginning and then they can really choose when and why they want to actually go to war with the allies. And especially if in multiplayer they're going to be working mostly on navy and they need dockyards, this works great for especially because they get a pretty much kind of balanced level of civilian factories and military factories, so it really helps Italy out a lot. And now we have Japan. This is perfect under every single circumstance for Japan because as Japan, you need every bit of resources possible and you're pretty much trading for them up until the point you can actually get China taken over. They also have focuses letting them go straight to total mobilization in just five focuses so they can convert them faster than any other nation in the Axis without ever having to be at war. This lets Japan get enough civs and the resources needed for war and at the same time lets them work on navy to fight the US because they have a large chromium deposit already in Japan and then they'll be able to get the synthetics and the dockyards needed to fight the United States. Now before we end this, I need to mention one last very important thing. No, I'm not going to tell you guys to subscribe even though it would be helpful. I want to make sure everybody understands. A lot of people in a few of my videos have been pointing out things saying that those strategies don't work. Let me say this, people have their own opinions all the time on every single thing. For example, I did a 26 width division video showing off 26 width artillery divisions and 16 width infantry, which I forgot to show the 16 width infantry, but they shouldn't by any means make sense to work in multiplayer or single player, but they do. Every time I've tried them, they have shredded everybody in my way except for tanks. Another example is a 46 width tank template video I showed off a long time ago. Again, it made no sense, it should not be able to work under combat, but again, everybody it went up against, single player and multiplayer, did the exact same thing. It's all fun and everything to try to add up the math behind different strategies and say these things work and these things don't. But Hearts of Iron 4, there are so many different levels of different types of bonuses and penalties you can get. You can never truly add one deciding strategy into one example. And that's one thing that really truly annoys me about the comments I get a lot of, a lot of on my videos where people say, 10% attack plus 15% defense and this bonus and that bonus make no sense why this would work and this is a bad idea. Again... There are so many factors that can go into Hearts of Iron 4 that change things and make them work compared to just absolutely trash. An example, you can make the best tank division ever seen on Earth, and it has the best stats of any unit in the game. But if you have a thousand 20 width divisions stacked in one tile where it's attacked, they shouldn't be able to do anything. But if you try that, they're gonna stop it. And then on top of that, if you have air superiority and the cast attacking it, and they have no air, even though it's the strongest unit in the game, it's going to lose. So again, it's all fun and everything to try to add up different things and determine if they work or not in Hearts of Iron 4 by math's sake. But again, there is real no way to know if something's going to work or not unless people try it and it works for their play style alone and other people's. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe I did teach you something new. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome.